Welcome back. Today we're going to finish the stairwell pocket and add some blocking to the subfloor joists. Now that all the primary joists are in, I need to complete this stairwell pocket so that I can define where the subfloor is going to land above. I have to build these walls in place because there's not enough room to build them on the ground and raise them. So I'm securing the top plate to the joist now and the bottom plates already on the ground on the far side as you can see and so then i'll just measure each of the studs individually uh, with proper spacing and uh, secure that uh, in place based on the string lines that i've run uh, and the measurements that i've taken and this will allow me to fully define the subfloor above so that when we start putting in the sheathing uh, we know exactly where everything will go so this stairway will turn uh, it'll start at the top on the left hand side uh, descend and then about where that wall ends on the right there'll be a platform about 20 21 inches off the cement and we'll have two more steps coming uh, in so it'll just be a 90 degree turn uh, for the last couple of steps uh, so that's why that gap is there and then above i'll end up putting uh, two double headers i don't really think they're called headers but it's you know two sandwiched joists at either end of the stairwell pocket uh, and uh, that just needs to be double checked for spacing so that when you come down the stairs that you have the required 80 inches uh, headspace uh, when, uh, when you get to that point. So this is where I'm putting in that uh, double header. Uh, you can see the string line in front of me. I've run that across the entire building to make sure that it's square uh, and also square with the other uh, double header on the other side. And uh, I have double checked that from the bottom of that joist to the platform that I'll be building uh, will be uh, in excess of 80 inches uh, so that we'll have plenty of clearance when we're uh, coming down the stairs. Above this, there's also going to be almost no weight. It's going to be a, a, just a little storage area, um, and it's not carrying anything uh, beyond that from a load perspective. Because there won't be a wall directly beneath this header, uh, I will be putting in a double joist hangers uh, for additional support. Uh, on the other side, that's not necessary because they are supported by the uh, supporting wall beneath them. So joist hangers aren't necessary, but on this side they will be. And I'll also add single joist hangers to these individual short joists that are just completing the spacing for the subfloor. So this is the completed stairway pocket, and this completes all of the framing and support necessary to start putting in the subfloor. So that'll be one of the next major projects. Right now, I'm getting ready to put in the blocking between the joists. I do this a couple of different ways, which I'll explain. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just run a string line, and then I'm using that string line to mark vertically uh, where the blocking will go uh, down about the center of each of the joist spaces. And here you can see the line. So it's a straight line right through the center. I've marked X's on either side because I'm going to stagger the blocking uh, for ease of nailing uh, mostly. And the other good reason for marking it, as you'll see, is I made a decision to skip some of the joist spacing. You can see I've marked the 12 and 8 and 4 foot marks on the floor. So every third joist is 4 feet, and that's where the seams for the subfloor will land. And I'm going to leave out the blocking around those primary seams because in order to ensure that the the subfloor sheathing lands in the center of each joist. It allows me just to uh, space that blocking and to measure it uh, slightly differently if I need to push a joist slightly in one direction or the other from the center. So I don't know if other people do that or if it makes a lot of sense. It's not really any more effort one way or the other. I just felt like while I was laying down the subfloor, if uh, a joist were out of line or if a, if a, if a piece of sheathing wasn't landing, uh, it would give me a, a little bit more opportunity to sort of efficiently address it rather than having to redo some of the blocks that I had already put in. In general, if you're doing 16 inch on center, as I am here, it means the blocking is going to be 14 and a half inches. So it, that defines the space in between the joists. But as I mentioned, if the joists are waving one way or the other, I can adjust those uh, measurements slightly. But now, with the exception of a few punch list items, uh, the entire subfloor and support structure is complete and ready for sheathing. This is the basement walkout level. 
on the right hand side uh, is the mechanical room uh, and then we're going to be walking into a, an area that is sort of a catch-all room uh, we have a couple of different ideas that we'll use for it but we haven't uh, defined walls or anything like that we really won't do any of the building of the basement area down here until the house is dried in and maybe even after we're moved in uh, we'll figure that out uh, as we go uh, but certainly this isn't the primary living space the stairwell pocket as you can see is complete there i debated on whether or not i needed to put in the stairway before i do the sheathing but i've decided that's probably what i'm going to do uh, it's just going to make getting up and down easier and I'll also be framing out those windows and doors and adding half-inch plywood in the meantime in order to just secure the building. You can see I've added the double joist hanger to the header on this side. Didn't need one on the other side. I still need to add the single joist hangers to those, uh, those interim joists, uh, so I'll be doing that as well. And so this is where the stairway will turn out, and there'll be egress to the outside uh, through that doorway there. Uh, and then we'll move back into the other section. Uh, this is going to be a laundry room, uh, bathroom, uh, sh dog shower, because uh, we have a couple of dogs, and it would be a nice way to bring in the dogs from the outside uh, and wash them downstairs before they get up into the house. Uh, that's that mechanical room I was mentioning earlier. That'll be where the electric panel is and most of the plumbing coming from the upstairs. And I ran this tarp because it just gets really hot out here and it just gives me a little respite some days for a break or for having lunch. It's also just easy to take up and take down. So while I'm anxious to get started on the subfloor sheathing, I will be doing that stairway and the door framing next. It just allows less time for the subfloor to be out in the weather. I do have it on site, but the later I can wait, if I have other things to do, it just means that it's exposed to weather for less time while I'm drying in the rest of the building. So here you see an overview. Uh, everything is complete. There's my level. I lost it. I couldn't find it. Uh, now I see where it is. You can also see that there's a slight angle between this section and the other section. Uh, you can think of them as being a bit pigeon-toed by about five degrees. Uh, there's not going to be any visual evidence of that once the house is built. Uh, but because of the things we talked about in the earlier videos with the foundation not being perfectly square, that's what we needed to resort to. And ultimately, it won't cause any real issues one way or the other. So that's where I'm at. Thanks a lot and see you next time.